Hello everyone, so this is going to be a very exciting unboxing for me. This is the newly released Rode Wireless Pro, okay? Uh, before this, I had the wireless Go 2 system that I used for my cameras, I used for my iPhone recording, and some of the videos that I made in the past. I sold that system, um, you know, kind of regret it because it was kind of nice setup. Um, but now, I just saw they released the Wireless Pro. Granted, this is a lot more expensive than the Wireless Go that I bought. I think I spent about $200 for that system used. This system, brand new, is $399, okay? Not the cheapest wireless system on the market. The good thing is it comes with two wireless mics, and I believe it comes with a whole bunch of other very useful accessories. Best of all, 32-bit float recording built right into the um, the transceiver. Amazing. And also, the feature that made me made the decision to buy it is the time code sync. Okay, so this this device or the trans the receiver actually works as a time code sync device. Now I'm not very experienced with time code. However, when I saw how it worked, then I thought, okay, I now I should really step up my video recording game by using the time sync to synchronize all my cameras available. Okay, I just ordered a GoPro 12, which also just released this week, that supports time code. And I have my Sony a7 IV right here. This is my second camera. And I have the a7 IV recording this entire video. And what you are hearing now is actually the a7 IV building microphone. So as we unbox this, as we start playing with this, I'm gonna actually hook this up with the, uh, the a7 IV and we're gonna hear what the sound quality is when the sound is actually coming from a dedicated wireless lavalier microphone which, you know, is going to be a lot better, all right? So let's get started with the unboxing. And again, as I said, the reason I bought this is for the time code function so I can synchronize time codes across multiple cameras. When I need to do a recording, I can have multiple angles available, okay? And uh, um, not the cheapest one, not the cheapest road available. Find the scissor. And I have always liked a lot of Rode products in the past. This one, I have a feeling that I'm gonna like it quite a lot as well. Right here. Okay, open up the box. Wow, this is, this is beautiful, okay? The, the wireless Go 2 uh, I got didn't come with dedicated box. And this one looks like it this one is a lot heavier. So this looks like a charging box. And this is probably the accessory box right here. And you have a regulatory and safety guide. Probably don't need to look at that. Let's see what else. You have a USB-C cable provided as well. Okay. And that's pretty much it in this box. All right, that, that was easy. And that concludes the unboxing. Right, uh, yeah, okay. So let's look at the charging box. And the material is is very nice. This is like a leatherette material, uh, probably made of uh, plastic, uh, but soft TPU kind of a material. Accessory box, let's see what's inside the accessory box. So over here are all the charging units right here. We're gonna take a look later. Let me see what's included in here. This box is quite nice. It actually fits every single accessory in this box, every single thing included, okay? So they didn't waste materials on, you know, stuffing everything outside of the box. They just actually put everything inside the box and you know where to put those things um, when you start using it, right? And this box had a little cute layers and flaps around. That's a lot of stuff. Wow, two lav mics. Those lav mics are not cheap and Rode lav mics usually um, are very, very high quality, okay? Look at those cute dead cats flying around in here. 
Nice. Five dead cats included. Wow. So pretty much every mic on here is going to get a dead cat if you choose to, um, to reduce ring noise if you're working, you know, outside. We're definitely going to test this uh, when my GoPro 12 comes. We're going to test this hooking up the dead, uh, the dead cat onto the mic. And we're going to go outside, do some bike rides, compare the quality of the building mic from the GoPro as well as using the wireless levelier mic with the GoPro and see which is going to sound better. Okay, so those are all going to be in the later section of this video. And what is this? So this looks like uh, some sort of like metal, like metallic. Okay, so this is probably for sure. Like you can, you can use this metallic clipper to just clip this in between two fabrics and it's gonna stick there, which is quite nice. And I'm probably not gonna be using this. And uh, let's see. So basically they just put it in here. They just clip it on, on top. All right. And that's what's come in the accessory box. Okay, quite a lot of stuff. Again, this is the USB cord. This is the Rode Lavalier Mic 2. This is extremely compact, much smaller than their previous generation and smaller than the Sennheiser mic that I had. Super tiny and super cute, right? All right, brand new. Um, it's got the locking 3.5 millimeter connector. You can remove this if you want for something that's not compatible, which is uh, very thoughtful, okay? We've got two of those, okay, exactly the same, Lav Mic 2, and uh, uh, Dead Cats, we're going to put the Dead Cats away, stuff this in the cute box right here, what's this, love your road, love your mic, share with us by hashtag road mic, cool, we'll definitely do that, you even got a nice clean cloth, okay, microfiber clean cloth, I don't know why you need clean cloth for, um, okay, I know why. All right, let's take a look. And two extra, oh no, uh, those are the adapters for different uh, devices. I think the TRS connector, whatever it's called, okay. Or TRSS or TRRS, whatever. So this is a USB to USB adapter. I believe we can hook this to the phone's USB directly, or you can hook this with the USB port on the transceiver and the lightning port over here for the iPhone 14. The good news is iPhone 15 that just came out, you can just directly use USB to hook it to the iPhone 15, right? Very nice. So pretty much you got Android and iPhone covered over here with those two adapters. And you have the standard 3.5 millimeter audio jack uh, over here, you have even more accessories. So on top of the five dead cats, you also have two foam uh, noise, wing noise reducers right here. Okay. Uh, pretty cute. Uh, looks like you can just stuff this on top. Okay. Like so. And still, it's uh, extremely compact. Very nice. This is fit by pressure. There's no clipping or whatever. It's just, you know, pressure fitted on here. And uh, actually, why don't we just actually put this on here to protect the mic itself? Okay, very easy and nice. Got those taken out of the way. And you have those cute clippers. The clippers also come with different color tags that you can put on different levelier mics. So you have two lav mics but you have four different color of clippers. Um, let's see where it clips to. I think it clips onto here. Oh yeah. So if you pry this off, the black color off, okay, you can clip one of those colored one on here. So let's use a blue. And we can also use an orange just cause it's a very bright color, easy to see. And obviously you have your default black color option right here. And on top of that, instead of using that magnetic one, 
You can use a little clipper over here to uh, actually hold this and clip it onto any kind of surface that you want to clip onto, including your finger. Okay, very nice. So yeah, pretty much everything for the lavalier mic. Over here, there are a lot of stuff for the lav mics. Um, if you don't use lav mic, if you use mostly the wireless mic, let's just take it out. Nice. So they are all connected through the USB cord over there. And if you unplug it, it automatically turns themselves on. Okay. So immediately ready for use. And I believe it should be charged. Wow. Start it up right away. Okay. I might have the camera go a little bit closer so you guys can see what the screen is, is about. But yeah, you have different color of tags. Let me just put this on here and then we'll take a look at the, the wireless mic themselves. Okay, like so. Very nice to uh, color code them. All right, let's put those away. And again, I'm most likely I'm not going to be using those lav mics. And I really love those just clip on shirt and start to use kind of a wireless mic setup. Very, very convenient. Okay. All right, move all the stuff out of the way and let me move the camera a little bit closer so we can take a closer look. All right, we got camera a little bit closer to the action right here. So um, again, the cables, I'm gonna put it away. I'm gonna keep this because we might use this to sync time code with the camera itself. But this is the charger. So the charger is built into the case which holds those devices, which is quite nice. On the back, there's a little button probably for pairing into stuff um and such all right i'm gonna put i'm gonna charge this right now uh so make sure the charger is fully charged and then we can charge the rest of the device and it's already picking up my my sound right here as you guys can see let's just peel this off wow um very beautiful glossy screen but i can already envision it's gonna have a lot a lot a lot of scratches in the long run. I I hope someone makes a screen protector for this, okay? That would be a big business. Uh, when you resell those, the glossy screen would still retain its, you know, beautiful polish. That would be nice, okay? But this, this is beautiful. It's a lot more beautiful, a lot better constructed compared to the wireless Go that I had before. The wireless Go feels um, kind of primitive, and the wireless Go 2, they, they, they are like very similar. But this one, it's got more smoothed out edges, I believe, if memory serves me right. This is the receiver, okay? Um, those are the transceivers. So if I, if I clip, let's see. Obviously, this cannot be used um, on the, the mic over here, but the dead cat can be used. The dead cat is a, um, a clip-on type, and actually different dead cats have different adapters. You need to make sure you grab the right one when you go outside. One is round for actually just for this, so it's like, if you clip it, it's gonna stay in place. Let's see. So you're aligning the two dots and then you twist it, okay? Okay. Once you twist it, it gets connected over here. So you definitely want to make sure you're bringing the right dead cat. Um, if you bought the wrong one, you are out of luck. So they did come with three dead cats for two of those, and uh, two of the dead cat, two of the dead cats for the lavalier mics. Okay, 
obviously they think you might lose the one on the wireless unit more more so than the one on the dead on the uh, on the lavalier mic quite nice yep so the twist turn it's it's really nice and obviously as you can see not much setup to be done because it's already kind of paired and ready to go for you um, on the bottom it does look like there are three three functions you have a volume function it looks like that's a volume that's uh, what merge and split function if you press two of those and that's a channel function or the linking function it looks like so I'm gonna press the volume and see what happens okay yeah so that's a gain setting and uh, still looks like the gain is a little bit high test test and that looks about right um, so those two are the indicators for the wireless mic I do not know what the M is for I think that's a merged volume I believe that's a merged volume let's change that setting by pressing both buttons all right so okay so the manual disappears after about a second I kind of wish it stays a little bit longer it disappears quite quickly and you can see there are two settings over here one is the confirm one is different options for merge split safety merge split safety I'm gonna hit split and set and yes so test test the split it looks like test. so merge automatically levels the two volumes and the split actually records those two volumes individually I believe into different files so you have two person doing the interview and having a lavalier mic they all can be customized um, and that's why right now in merged the volume looks about the same and if I change it to split test, test, the volume you can see it actually shows up differently which indicates or which is corresponding to the different volumes right here on different mics all right so the sensitivity can be adjusted I believe individually let's see if we can adjust individually volume the mic one and mic two all right now I see why the the gain was not changing because it was in auto gain mode okay and I don't know what the dynamic is what the auto is but you have it looks like you have limited uh, functionality just on the mic itself it looks like you have to actually hook this up to a computer to change some of the major settings um, for the Rode Wireless Pro and I also want to know where is the time sync option there's a, on the top is a power button and the power button for the for the transceiver is um, is on the bottom and once it's closed you can you know take a look so this is made in Australia straight out of their factory um, yeah quite nice it's small it's compact um, I bought this over the DJI wireless mic because this actually looks better and it supports time code for about the same amount of money plus two of those lavalier mic twos one of those if you buy it individually it's a hundred dollars so right over here is two hundred dollars okay so you definitely saved a lot of money by buying this as a set and not only that so before I go to my computer and hook it up and do some uh, settings change I am going to fully charge the unit okay and this one comes with this very nice probably like a foot long USB-C cable 
this cable is actually labeled uh, 60 watt charging capacity. So it's going to charge pretty fast. And this, this cable is actually very thick. It's thicker than the other USB-C cable that I've owned. Um, so probably an indication of it supporting a larger current charging for the uh, the charging case, which I would assume would charge fairly fast with a 60 watt um, USB-C wall uh, charger, right? And also it indicates it's five gigabits per second transfer data transfer rate. So this one also works with data transfer if you hook this uh, one end to the computer, all right? All right, guys, so unfortunately, I was promising to show you guys how to sync multiple or jam sync the Sony a7 IV cameras uh, using the timecode jam sync function of the Rode Wireless Pro. Sadly, I just found out, again, I don't have much experience with timecode, but I just found out that the a7 IV is not very well supporting the timecode syncing function um, without having a dedicated timecode device attached constantly feeding timecode signal into each of those machines. You won't be able to use the Rode Wireless Pro to jam sync all those cameras because when you try to output the timecode signal into the device, uh, the timecode displayed over here, okay, so I, I set the timecode to display the current time. The timecode displayed does not automatically get updated from the signal that's being pushed. Even though it's outputting a timecode signal to the a 7 IV, it's not syncing it automatically. So the only way to have the Sony um, synchronize similarly with timecode is to output a timecode signal on every single camera that you want to be synced. Um, which means you have to spend a couple hundred dollars on timecode syncing devices, okay? For me, very casual video production. I don't want to spend that much money. And also, unfortunately, that means I can't really display um, you know, the usefulness of timecode jam sync using the, um, the wireless pro device. If you have a pro camera, um, yes, you can use a wireless pro to do a jam sync at, you know, the very beginning of the shoot, every time you need to do that. Um, if you have an A7, Sony A7 series cameras, unfortunately, you have to just make sure <laughs> your internal time is set to as accurate as possible at the beginning of the shoot. So when you do, you know, editing in the uh, DaVinci Resolve or, you know, um, other editing software, you, you, you sync time code based on the current time. And that's the only way you can do that with Sony cameras. And that's a hard truth that I just found out while doing this review. While I was trying to find out how to show you guys to sync, how to sync the time code on my a7 IV cameras. Sadly, I can't do that. So obviously, it's useless for me to show you this camera right here in the setup. Um, what I can do now is probably just set this camera as a, a second, you know, as a second angle, maybe showing my, my face and have the main camera just showing you what's under here or, you know, what's facing you. And just to show you some additional things that I think is kind of cool to show you guys uh, before we wrap up this video and also give you some uh, audio quality samples using both the internal building microphone on the Sony camera, as well as having the microphone, you know, put on my um, on my shirt. We're gonna do some recordings, and we'll also take the lavalier mic out and do some recordings using the lavalier mic, which I already tried while I was doing the uh, the screen captures. Uh, while I was trying to change the settings on the PC. Those lavalier mics are um, very sensitive and they work uh, exceptionally well. So I have no doubt they're gonna work great in the audio test. All right guys, so now I have uh, both cameras started recording and I set my time code, unfortunately, manually using the jam think of pressing both buttons at the same time. Um, now the time, the time clock for now should work and all the audio I get 
and all the clips I get should fairly be uh, synchronized um, using uh, in a multicam setup. And what hasn't been uh, incorporated is the actual um, the actual receiver. So I'm gonna try to also have the receiver do 32-bit recording um, inside the device. So I'm gonna hit record on both device. And if you see when I hit record, the red light comes up in both devices. Each of those uh, transceivers actually um, have 32 gigs of building memory in it. So quite a lot of memory um, for even 32-bit float recording. I think it records for like hours and hours, way more than I need uh, during just one video, um, for example, this one, okay? So I just started recording, and if you see the audio level over here, I'm using a safety setup. So what you see here is um, I have one mic, actually both mics are on auto, um, auto gain and uh, that's probably going to be the most common that I'm going to be using for video recording and for the safety feature it records one audio at the current set gain and it records a backup audio track in a different channel um, that's like 10 dB less so that way if this is outputted into the camera your camera is going to have two audio tracks one is the original track and the other is a safety track in case someone blew, you know, into the mic. And, but for the internal recording, you can see both of those are actually recording the files inside here. So now we can have all the audios recorded all at the same time and we can actually switch around to different audios. We have the audio that's being recorded into the device over there that's showing my whole face. And we have the uh, audio that's recorded over here into this you know, top view device, the top view camera. And then we have one recording here in you know, device one. We have one recording here in device two. So I'm just gonna actually, let's see. I'm gonna change this one into the lavalier mic you know, all on the, um, on the, in the real time. And when you plug something here and, uh, especially the lav mic one, uh, or, you know, the lav mic, uh, generation two, whatever, it's, it's going to automatically use this input over here. Okay. For now it's a safety recording. So I don't really know which one is which I'm going to actually flip it to split. Then I know which device is which. All right, I'm gonna use a split right here. I'm gonna confirm, test, test. So it looks like channel one is the actual lavalier mic right here. Channel two is the uh, building microphone right here. And both of those right now are in auto mode. So um, the cool thing I want to show you guys is um, the road not only includes this building hot shoe mount, right here this one is actually plastic okay so but on top of that remember what i showed you is a magnetic adapter this adapter is genuinely uh, incorporated with a metal piece that clips onto the actual hot shoe mount i'm going to show you guys on the spot so you're going to clip this so the other side is two little clips over here you're basically just going to open up your original hot shoe clip you open it up you flip this where the road, you know, uh, logo is over here, and you're gonna slide this in here, cover the original logo, and now boom! Not only you have a strong metal clip. Uh, I know I remember people complained that the clip is actually plastic, but if you add this extra protector on here, it's metal, and it's not gonna break that easily. Not only that those magnetic strips is gonna come in handy, okay? So you put this on your shirt and it's gonna stick. And I'm gonna try that right now, okay? And hopefully it doesn't show anything. So 
over here. I want to mount it. Actually, this is not a good example because that's a lavalier mic. Um, let's use the um, this one. This one is going to be more used for for the magnetic clip where you're going to adapt, put that little metal piece adapter. Okay, metal piece adapter on there. And basically, I'm going to go in under my shirt. Hopefully, I don't embarrass myself. And you just find a spot and you click it over there. And there you go. Uh, very, very easy to clip on your shirt. And let's check the gain level. And also the cool thing is, I believe there's a mute function. Okay, so if you click on each of those adapters, you can mute one channel very easily. All right, so um, yes, let's continue. Uh, I have the channel one muted, which is a lavalier mic. So right now, you know, it doesn't interference with whatever that I'm doing or demonstrating with the recording come out from this mic that's building. And uh, uh, next, let's find the little clip, okay? This little, little piece of clip over here. It's very useful. So um, it's got two clipping area. Uh, you can either grab You can either grab the top using this little piece or you could grab the, okay, let's see. So, okay, I think this is the proper setup, okay? You grab the top and you're supposed to actually make a turn on the wire so it doesn't make any noise when the wire is being dragged around, like so. And then you clip this on your shirt. Uh, let's see how well it works. I, I don't really know. Bear with me because um, Okay, so Looks like it's supposed to be clipping this way And Let's find out what... All right guys, so this is the second time I connected my Rode Wireless Pro and uh, including the receiver and the transceivers so now I have some audio recordings uh, recorded in those uh, receivers. Uh, at when I, when I go here, those settings all become available. Okay. Um, over here, the only thing I want to export from both of those devices are my recent recordings that I want to compare audio quality with uh, the, the cameras building audio, which on the transceiver two is number one and number two and transceiver one is number four and number five. Now, if you notice, if I switch around, you can't, you cannot transfer and select multiple files from different transceivers. Um, you have to download each file one by one. And again, as I mentioned earlier, those settings, um, the export settings is pertaining to all those devices. You can change for one device and the other Use a different setting okay but regardless we're gonna take full advantage we're gonna go 32-bit float and we're gonna export those files on the transceiver one first okay so basically i'm just gonna let's see uh this is uh one And you can see the file actually gets exported extremely fast. And this is transceiver two. And I'm gonna export 32-bit float. Uh, I might want to actually make a new folder to distinguish both files so later on I can select. <coughs> Interestingly, uh, transceiver two actually the file in number in transceiver two actually took longer for some reason. The one is like much faster, and we're we're looking at. Oh, okay, I know why. Um, okay, so it was probably processing the file while it's exporting. Okay, so because I didn't preview those files, it took a little bit longer. But once all the files are cached, it exports uh, much faster. Okay, so those are the recordings. And 
this is the latest file, the last one. I mean, just from the preview, I can already tell you both of those recordings from the left mic, as well as the building uh, microphone from the Wireless Pro, all sounded really fantastic. There are no noise. Um, what I'm speaking right now is I'm using the left mic plugged into my sound card on my PC. You, you're probably gonna hear a lot of noise coming out from the sound card just because the processing um, or you know internal, um, I guess, the, the audio converter quality is so much inferior compared to what's you know on the on the wireless pro and so this is what i want to show you guys how to export those files extremely easy and you have many different other options you can customize and select the file format between wave and mp3 or you can select a particular format for export depending on where you want to export them to uh, himalaya soundcloud buzz those are i've never heard maybe they're australian companies um, but yeah basically take full advantage of the 32-bit float you're gonna get the best output uh, from the internal recording okay but that's pretty much it all those things are still charging um, and uh, the next section i'm gonna try to um, show you guys the recording of the audio recording with the gopro 12 and we're gonna go from there Right, guys so I have all the lavalier mics hooked up one is with the um, the building microphone with a, a windscreen and the other is with the lavalier mic 2 generation 2 of the lavalier mic uh, hooked up to one of the receiver right here the advantage of this is you can hide the wires uh, it's very small and uh, it's very comfortable compared to the uh, the actual wireless mic, if you just use the building one, it's much more substantial, as you can see over here. And I'm going to switch around the audios uh, from different mics, and uh, you guys can hear the difference. So it's gonna switch first, I guess, to the, uh, to the camera that's kind of a little bit further away that's recording the audio. I bet it doesn't sound as good um, as well, I'm gonna switch to the lavalier mic. And uh, that's even without any testing, I know, because again, building uh, microphones on the cameras, close range, they might work pretty good, but as long as you get further away, it's really bad, okay? And now I'm switching to the building mic on the, uh, on the top view camera. You guys can see with the auto leveling, um, it's just trying to keep my my voice at a optimized level with the the output that it's you know it's doing and right now this is not outputting to anywhere this is just serving as a display unit for me to know the gain level um, and as well as the volume from the mic one and mic two mic one is the lovelier mic mic two is the building mic they all seems to be on the same gain level which is kind of optimized at that like 12 db gain which is good. So both of those can work and it really depends on your, um, I guess on your workflow. If you don't mind a big wireless mic in front of you doing video recording, by all means, this is the easiest way. And uh, if you want a little bit more comfort, use a left mic, you know, it's also pretty easy. Um, but I know a lot of people just want to grab one thing and go and do the recording. So really suits your needs very differently, all right? So hopefully by now you hear you heard all the different recordings from different devices. And the recording one and recording two is all recorded on the 32-bit, which I have to export later on in the post and uh, putting put back into the audio clip over here for you guys to see or to for you guys to hear. Okay. And that's pretty much it. I have no doubt it's gonna sound very, very good. Um, next section. When my GoPro arrives, we're gonna actually mount the transceiver, the receiver on the GoPro 12, and uh, we're gonna use again both of those mics and give it a try and see which mic might work best in kind of a GoPro action riding bicycle scenario with the wind actually blowing. 
Uh, and then, you know, I would give you guys a final conclusion on what I think, how well those devices works in the actual scenario where I want to use it. So that concludes the in-studio audio test. And next, I want to show you those wires, okay? Actually also show you how easy and convenient it is to configure um, the setting on this with your phone. I have an iPhone. I just installed a Rode Central app. And uh, let's actually just show you guys really quick. So when you install the Rode Central app, okay, um, it's gonna tell you to connect a device. There are two ways you can connect those devices. The first and most convenient without those devices in the charger is to just hook up one of those cable in response to your phone. If you have a Android phone, use the USB-C to USB-C cable. Both of those cables should work. This cable is more or less for charging this thick cable. It's to ensure the temperature, that, like it doesn't overheat. This thinner cable is more for data transfer and for hooking up to your camera and your phones, okay? So I'm gonna be using the USB to lining cable since I have an iPhone. So I'm gonna hook the USB side to the receiver. Super, super convenient, okay? Um, and I'm gonna hook this to my iPhone and you guys can see what happens. Boom, instantly detected all the pairs of the devices right here, okay? So again, all this, most of the settings you can access are pretty convenient and they all show up right here. You can change the manual settings over here, the amount of time code, the time code frame rate. You want to use a time code by doing a reset, starts from zero, or you want to use real time as your time code. Both are options. Again, time code unfortunately doesn't work with my Sony A7 IV, but if you have a device that's compatible with jam syncing or you know all your cameras, this is extremely useful. Okay. Um, I could turn those time code functions off again because I don't I don't need time code function. It doesn't work with my Sony device, and uh, uh, but it could be useful uh, for the GoPro. But then again, I don't really see the need for time code if I'm only using one GoPro. I turn it off. Okay. That way, if you access manual settings, you're gonna switch through the manual so much quicker. Okay. Right. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's it. So the time code option actually disappeared right here the moment I turn off the time code setting in the master uh, receiver. And over here, if both of your devices are turned on, you can also see the transceivers over here. On the transceiver, you have a couple settings. As I told you, I had both of the gain assist on auto. Okay. This only applies for the, the output uh, that's going out from the, the receiver. It doesn't apply to the 32-bit 30, float audio that's recorded. The 32-bit float audio is has a very wide dynamic range, so it doesn't really need gain assist. It's not gonna blow the highs and the lows, and it's always gonna be there. So again, remember those gain assist only works for uh, the receiver output. That's, you know, the signal comes out from the receiver. Over here is the internal recording mode right here you have manual always if you set it always every time you turn on the device it's going to start auto recording now remember the recording on the on the receiver is going to drain batteries faster obviously um, so if you want to conserve battery and you don't really need that 32-bit recording you set to manual in this case i want that 32-bit recording because i need to use that files to demonstrate on to, to you guys the audio quality uh, as recorded on the Rode Levelier mics and the Rode, you know, trans transceiver mics. Over here, you can customize the button function very easily. You can mark the audio. You can mute uh, by pressing that Rode button. Uh, that's a short press, by the way, single click, okay? Mute, and you can set it to none. So if you set it to none, uh, if you click that button, nothing is gonna happen, but if you long press, it's gonna turn off the device. Uh, Sam, for the other device over here. If you press, it's gonna mute. Um, 
Over here, you can also customize the button press for marker, record, and none on the uh, on the receiver. Okay, so button customizable through the apps over here. Uh, the interesting thing is when I connected this to the computer, um, I was not able to customize those two buttons. Uh, interestingly, but it, it actually shows up in the app over here, but not on the road central on the computer. Um, so some of the settings are available here. Some of the settings are available on the road center computer. So it really depends on what you need, but it looks like all the settings I need is easily accessible over here without a PC. So that's really good news, right? Um, alternatively, if you don't connect this directly to your phone, you could unplug this, put this on the charger. And now I don't know what's gonna happen if I put this on the charger, let's find out. And uh, um, okay, so it I think it turned itself off and it, it went into the charging mode. As you can see, it's used about you know a quarter of the battery within the last uh, almost two hours. So plenty of battery life left for even more recording time if needed. Okay, excellent, excellent. And in this mode, what you can do is again, connect the USB cable on the back and connect the other side to your iPhone. Boom. It's gonna, it's gonna give you options for this, this device only. Interestingly, um, right now it's pretending that this device is turned off. It's only in charging mode and you're only accessible to this receiver in charging mode. Even in charging mode, all the options are available for the receiver. You can change the settings on the transceiver. Now granted, all my transceivers are still working and recording into the internal device. So they're always working, regardless of the receiver status. So it's really nice that the transceiver actually has internal storage and is always recording a very, very versatile, large file, okay? That file, you need the road central to export, okay? Just, just so you know but I'm showing you the options over here. Now, if you turn off the receiver and you plug those receivers in here, yes, you will be able to see those receivers turn off and options, you know, adjustable options right here. So you have multiple ways of accessing the essential settings you need to change um, through the little charging port over here. So my advice is always bring this charging port, okay? One, it ensures your device is always charged, ensure your device is always uh, accessible when you need to change the settings, or actually you don't need the charging port to change the settings, but yeah, it just keeps your device charged. And it doesn't take much space, it's very compact. All right, so I'm gonna take this out, and obviously this setting is gonna disappear, and I'm just gonna unplug this. There is a charging indicator over here. When you, you know, when you don't have anything in here and you put the charging cable over here, it's gonna charge the case only. But if you have all the device in here, it's gonna charge both the case and the device. I have a 60 watt charger, which is what the road recommends for charging. This is like a super fast charger and it charges the device and the charging, the, the battery itself extremely fast, okay? So just keep that in mind, you need a good charger to be able to charge the case and your devices fast. Now we got the charger out of the way. Uh, I want to show you something else, let's see. Oh yes, the, no I lost one of the clicking uh, clipper for some reason. Where did I put it? Okay, oh yeah, uh, this one is a hot shoe. You don't really need a metal, you know, thing for here because it actually just always mounts to your camera's hot shoe and it plugs right in there. So you don't have to worry about that. Now, startup time is really, really good. Like less than three seconds, it starts recording. And uh, um, for, for the actual transceiver, you turn it on within one second, it records and it starts to transmit data. So extremely fast, extremely responsive. Now, back to this glossy screen. Um, it's actually pretty fingerprint resistant. Like so far, I haven't able to get any grease on the screen as much, but 
again, I really want a screen protector for this screen, okay? Uh, it would be nice if someone could actually make a pre-cut screen protector for this. Uh, it would actually, again, keep the retail value high later on if I want to sell this. Warranty is really good. I just registered my device, provides me with two years of warranty. Um, so yeah, very good. Um, I, I doubt Rode is going to have bad support because it seems like they're very responsive in answering questions on their YouTube channels and they provided some very helpful uh, instructional videos for the Wireless Pro, uh, you know, right after lunch. So extremely useful and very easy to use. For me, someone who doesn't have a lot of experience with audio recording, who doesn't have a lot of experience with, uh, you know, video uh, recording um, and who just got into just got an interest in time code uh, and found out sadly that time code is <laughs> not supported by my camera um, you know uh, that's okay at least i figured out how to synchronize the time code the manual way and i know that the wireless pro is going to give me the capability of uh, more advanced time code sync for you know advanced cameras um, but so that's a really good thing to know all right but in terms of recording and versatility, next section, we're gonna test out the, uh, the actual wireless pro on the GoPro 12 in an outdoor setting. So we'll come back and find out, okay? All right, guys. So I know in the previous clips, I promised to show you how the Rode Wireless Pro is gonna work with the GoPro 12. Um, I thought that could probably be a separate video because as I added the first review uh, and unboxing of the wireless pro I realized it's already close to one hour so I don't really want to bore you with the GoPro 12 test with the wireless pro so if you are interested please do hit the like button for the video and also hit the subscribe button so when the GoPro 12 review with the wireless pro comes out uh, you will be notified um, I'm gonna right here make my first impression conclusion um, after unboxing and just you know doing a general test in the studio and uh, without hesitant I will 100% recommend anybody looking for a wireless solution uh, to seriously give the wireless pro a consideration because um, during my in-house test you know it worked great with a building mic it works great with a lavalier mic and uh, as you can hear from the sound quality comparison uh, in the previous footage uh, having a lavalier mic really close to you is really the best way to go it just sounds so much more round and uh, so much more clear and also eliminates a lot of environmental noises and uh, yes i would 100 percent highly recommend the wireless pro uh, not only that the extra money that you spend on the wireless pro compared to some other you know wireless mic options out there that usually sells for entry level maybe around hundred dollars to the advanced level uh, like the DJI's uh, I think wireless mic which sells for like three hundred fifty dollars uh, this is again by far the most expensive wireless mic came out for the amateurs and the professionals alike at 399 but as I said earlier the two lav mics included, super high quality lav mics, are worth $200 alone. The charging case, they included for free, and also it works fantastic, charges your wireless mics, uh, I mean the wireless receivers and the transceiver for, I think, up to 21 hours of use. So at least two to three times, full charge, okay? So you could be out on the field for the whole day, maybe two days shoes, without even bringing or without even having to have a wall outlet to charge your wireless mics, which I think it's fantastic. It securely stores your transceivers and receivers and also this other cute little case that's included uh, perfectly fits every little accessory that you need or originally came with the wireless mic in here, okay? It's, it's just very well designed compared to the last generation of the wireless uh, wireless uh, go to that I had which included a kind of elongated case that doesn't really fit much stuff in here in there And I have to buy an additional case to fit the remaining stuff um, That came with wireless go in there. So You know right off the bat the execution of and the thoughtfulness of 
how to store the accessories already in, impressed me quite a lot. Okay, and uh, um, in terms of the, the performance, the 32-bit float recording really worked fantastic. I was able to, you know, directly export it and just put it in my um, DaVinci Resolve and extract all the details and all the, and adjust it to the volume that I like um, post-processing. So very easy thing to do. And again, for that $399, you are also getting a, a very good time code machine. Unfortunately, as I mentioned earlier, uh, my Sony a7 IV is so dumb, it doesn't really synchronize um, using the jam sync function of the, uh, the wireless pro, which, you know, again, it's not the wireless pro's fault, it's my Sony camera's fault. But as a workaround, I was able to actually just, uh, you know, my small video production, I was able to synchronize everything just using the DaVinci's auto sync with the audio. And it actually paired up all the recordings from uh, the, wireless, um, the wireless pro's internal wave format with the recording that I obtained from the, the uh, from inside the video camera. So it all worked out fine. And, uh, but if you need time code and your camera supports automatic sync of the time code and the jam syncing, by all means, this is a great value without having to spend anything extra um, to get into time code um, workflow, right? So again, this is my first impression unboxing and kind of a, like a quick demo of everything um, included in the Wireless Pro setup. Um, if you guys are interested, please do hit the subscribe button. And my next video is definitely gonna be a comprehensive test of the Wireless Pro um, paired with the GoPro 12 when I, when I go outside and do kind of like outdoor shooting scenario. So definitely subscribe for the future video. And I hope you guys found this video helpful. Okay, if you did, please do hit the like button or subscribe to my channel. I will have more similar videos coming out for you guys. Thanks again and see you in the next video. Take care.